Good morning to you, Jason. Uh, you've written about this subject in the past, uh, but is this potential move taking away people's freedom of choice, do we think? Good morning. Thanks for having me on. I, I worry that it is taking away people's freedom of choice. We're seeing this flood of new rules uh, with all kinds of nanny statism. It started with obesity policy um, and now it's moving into smoking and vaping as well. And I'm concerned about this road that we're heading down. I don't know what the logical conclusion is of all these new restrictions saying, oh, you can't eat that, you can't drink that, you can't smoke that. We're going to end up in some kind of miserable dystopia where we all have to eat grey sludge. I think there comes a point where we have to just allow people to take risks with their own lives and with their own health, because otherwise we have to give up our freedom to, to keep everyone completely healthy. Well, the logical conclusion is, the logical conclusion is people will be healthier and live longer. That, that's the point, isn't it? Yeah, of course, but uh, there's a balance to be found, isn't there? We can do all kinds of things. We could outlaw cars and we'd eliminate deaths from car crashes, but we don't do that because we want people to be able to live their lives in a convenient, in a free way. And when it comes to vaping, I think that this kind of move to ban sales of vaping, of, of vapes to uh, under 21s would be actively bad actually for public health outcomes because so many people use vaping as a tool to quit smoking. And we know, we know that vaping is so much healthier than smoking. We know, for example, that it has 0.5% of the lifetime cancer risk that smoking does. And va vaping is the most effective tool that we have ever discovered for helping people quit smoking. It works in 74% of cases, so it's much more effective than nicotine patches, for example, or any other method for quitting cigarettes. Um, and so if the government is trying to make the country smoke free, it seems absurd that they should be cracking down on vaping. Mm. It's become very trendy, though. I mean, I, I see, I don't know if many other people see it too, uh, people, you know, as young as, well, I mean, uh, young, youngsters, let's say, thinking that vaping is OK. I mean, it's still, the jury is out on vaping. I know, you, I know you've just stated some, some figures there, but actually it, it's, it's still not the way we should be going um, or, or really what our youngsters should be doing. I mean, I'm a mum of two, you know, one teenage boy, and, and I know he talks about a lot of his friends doing it already. That really concerns me, Jason. And that's entirely fair enough. But when you look at it in the, in the grand scheme of things, and you look at the effect that smoking has, and of course, we know how harmful smoking is, um, the benefit of vaping is a wholly positive one, because it allows so many people to quit. I know people personally have been able to uh, quit smoking as a result of taking up vaping. And um, according to Public Health England, I'm not a scientist, but according to the data from Public Health England, overall, the health risks from vaping are 95% lower than they are from smoking. It's easy to conflate, I think, uh, tobacco addiction with nicotine addiction. I think one is much more dangerous than the other. Tobacco addiction, smoking traditional cigarettes, uh, is incredibly harmful in a number of ways because cigarettes are packed with all kinds of toxic chemicals and they're full of tar and they make your lungs black and so on. Whereas with vaping, none of that's the case. And yes, of course, it's not perfect for your health. And in terms of, in public health terms, the ideal solution would be for everyone to stop using any kind of substance at all. But this is a huge step in the right direction for people to be sm switching from smoking to vaping as we are seeing happen at the moment. And so uh, resisting that would makes it much harder to make England smoke free by 2030, which is what the government's trying to do. But, but Jason, the, the difficulty with that argument is we're talking about younger people who, on the whole, are not hooked on nicotine. They're not going to vaping because they're trying to kick the nicotine habit. And conversely, if you start vaping when you weren't smoking before, there's much stronger risk that you're going to take up smoking after. Well, my concern with, uh, with younger people in particular is that bans of this kind, both for cigarettes and for e-cigarettes, don't actually work. If you look, for example, at uh, 11 to 15 year old children, who of course it's, it's illegal, it's not possible for 11 to 15 year old children to buy cigarettes at the moment anyway, so this kind of sales ban is already in place. But an NHS study found that 16% of 11 to 15 year olds have actually smoked anyway. And so my concern is that with a ban, all it will do is push people who want to buy those products towards the illegal market, which means that they're much less safe because they don't know what they're buying. They're not able to buy from reputable licensed vendors. And so they don't know what they're putting in their bodies and we're putting them in much more danger and fueling lots of money into criminal gangs in the process. Um, if people are going to smoke or vape, which I think is inevitable, 
the best way for that to happen is for them to be able to buy it from licensed companies legally in shops so that we can regulate it properly and we can tax it and uh, we can make sure that we keep everyone as safe and healthy as we possibly can. Mm. 